Good morning, fish heads in Cowboys Nation. 70,000 strong. And yes, this is Pride Day, so it's Prize Day. So tonight, we open up the floodgates. Ed Tutal Jones, the autographed jersey, uh, will be available to you. Stay tuned. Fish at six tonight, uh, and we'll tell you how you or you or you are going to win. Uh, I don't get too wrapped up, as you know, in the Stephen A. Smith uh, fake cowboy hate silliness. But he did make a comment this week um, that merits a little bit of reflection because it helps project us where we want to go, helps project me where I want this particular episode to go. Ha ha ha. The Cowboys aren't any good anymore. The best team in Texas is Houston. Ha ha ha. It's, it's not funny. It might be true, but it's not funny. If you're going to accept my thesis that we are um, 11 months away from a, you call it what you want to, rebuild, remodel, reload, I wouldn't, by the way, blame. I don't, when we get there and the Joneses admit that that's what we're doing here, I wouldn't mind at all if they want to call it a reload instead of a rebuild. Uh, because the roster core remains very, very good. So they don't have to scrap everything. The roster core remains, this is 12 and 5, 12 and 5, 12 and 5 roster core. That's something to build on. So reload, remodel, however you want to phrase it, uh, however you want to frame it, that, that puts Cowboy Nation and the people in the building in the right frame of mind uh, as they do what I think they're going to do in the spring of 2025. I do believe that's important. As it sits here right now, two transactions in recent hours uh, that help paint a picture of how to do this, the Houston way or the Dallas way. We told you yesterday that Lyle Collins, who the Cowboys did not have under contract here, as you know, uh, but we kind of thought, hey, that'd be nice to keep Lyle around on a, on a, you know, well, it's going to be one year because that's what they're doing everybody. And it's going to be veterans minimum because that's all you get around here. Wouldn't that be nice? Lyle Collins signs with the Buffalo Bills with a contract up to six and a half million dollars. Diddly diddly dink. What? The Buffalo Bills. And I don't know what the Cowboys offered Lyle, if anything. Uh, I don't I don't think he was a problem in the building in his short time here at the end of last year. And of course, he's close friends with the quarterback. All those things played into the idea that, hey, let, let's let's keep Lyle Collins. The Bills may have just paid him five times what the Cowboys might have wanted to bother paying him five times. It's a deal you could have done. The Cowboys choose to not do it. Meanwhile, down Houston way, as the Bills move off of Diggs, Houston takes on Diggs. I don't know the details how they do this. I've just skimmed over it. They have moved future bonus money into his contract this year. They've given him a raise. It's not just $18 million. He gets $22 million. And again, I don't know how you do this either, but they found a way. They have erased the final three years of his contract. Now, I don't know about the Piper being paid. I don't know about that part. So they're allowing him to be a free agent after this year. Maybe they want him to be a free agent after this year. Maybe they recognize that there is something about Stefan Diggs' track record that tells you he, he comes to town. He plays at an incredibly high level. And then at some point he devolves into a pain in the ass. Happened in Minnesota, happened in Buffalo. Maybe Houston's smart enough to know we don't, we don't want to do him long term. <laughs> Short term's good enough for us. Meanwhile, on both these things, the Cowboys sit on their hands. Um, maybe justifiably. Maybe they took a good look at Lyle Collins and said, well, he just doesn't have, the, doesn't have it anymore. And they look at their situation and say, as I've said for two years, the Diggs thing doesn't work here. Of course, financially, the Diggs thing didn't work anywhere. And Buffalo and Houston still got it done. So in reflecting on the Diggs thing, especially our friend Clarence Hill of the Star-Telegram, 
puts up a tweet. And you have to kind of read between the lines here. So I'll, I'll just, I'll, I'll take Clarence's thoughts and then just make them our own here. When you have a cop, when you have, what, what Houston's doing is they have CJ Stroud, a terrific rookie season last year, franchise quarterback, inarguably. And you hurry up and try to win now while he's on his cheap rookie contract. It's going to get harder to win when he's due to make his 60 million a year or 70 or whatever the crazy number is, three and four and five years down the line. You go for it now. And they're doing that. Here's Texans transactions. And then the comparison we're going to make, uh, Clarence pushing us in that direction, when the Cowboys were in this situation, the exact same situation, what did they do? So here's the Texans offseason quickly. They re-signed the kicker, Fair Baron. They re-signed the cornerback, defensive back, Desmond King. Uh, they re-signed Dalton Schultz. They re-signed Noah Brown. They bring in, okay, that, that's Cowboy-esque in past years, not this year. In past years, that's Cowboy-esque. That's fine. Also, they sign a free agent, starting cornerback, Jeff o uh, Okuda. They sign a free agent, pass rusher, backup, Mario Edwards. They sign a free agent, defensive back, C.J. Henderson, number nine overall pick in 2020. Hasn't worked out. They'll take a flyer on him. They go and sign Al Shair, starting linebacker. They go and sign Daniil Hunter, outstanding defensive end, $24 million a year, and they go get digs. That's go for it, go for it, go for it. They went and got three starters in outside free agency. In part, of course, because it's, it's easier for them to do that cap-wise because they have gone through their rebuild. They're, they're there now. What about when the Cowboys were there now, then? The 2016 Cowboys. What an, what an almost glorious time that was. They rescue themselves in a very notable, successful, and entertaining way. Remember, we're at training camp. We go to Seattle. Tony gets bumped on the shoulder, Tony Romo. And I'm in the locker room afterwards. He goes, I'm, I'm talking to him. And you can see his little discomfort, but he's, I'm fine. And he wasn't. And during this same process, the number two quarterback, Kellen Moore, goes down. We're in, uh, we're at training camp in Oxnard, and there goes Kellen off on the cart. Now what? Well, we got these two kids. We got Jamil Showers and this other guy. And this other guy wins the job by default. Jay Kelly, we are still paying Romo. You think so? Hold on. This is why I beg of you. Pull out your number two pencils and reserve comment for just a minute. And Dak Prescott, and maybe this was as the Cowboys of another generation once said, maybe this was uh, the benefit of the uncluttered mind, paraphrasing. But Dak played at an extremely high level as a rookie. That team rallied around him. 
that, that, that was a, that was a very entertaining. Again, they didn't win the Super Bowl. Very entertaining deal. Brent Pittman. Dak was on a rookie deal. That's what I'm saying. We were still paying Romo. Hold on. So the Cowboys in 2016, for the sake of this thesis, were very similar to the Texans of last year when they the Texans were surprisingly good that fast. Lobo Pack, now, now we're talking. You, you get where I'm going. 2016 Cowboys, surprisingly good with this guy at quarterback. Houston Texans, surprisingly good with C.J. Stroud, who, again, teams knew he had a chance to be good, but that quick, that good, and the people around him, that quick, that good. New coach, new offensive coordinator, new defensive coordinator, new quarterback, all coming together. And now they build on their 2023, 2023 season by recognizing we have C.J. Stroud on a rookie contract. Let's go for it hard. Now let's go to the 2017 Cowboys. The 2016 Cowboys did it just like, not just like, did it in a similar way to what the Cowboys did in 2016. Last year's Texans were not dissimilar to the 2016 Cowboys. Byron Joe, how serious are the Cowboys about mixing in potential draft picks with the vets? They don't have any choice. Yeah, Byron, th this year's draft picks and last year's draft picks and the year before's practice squatters are going to be rotational players and starters for this Cowboy team. How, how else How else do you fill in 10 slots? Derek, they had pieces. Amari, Gallup, Zeke, offensive line, Dak failed. That's not fair. So you're saying, you're saying Zeke succeeded and Dak failed. Gallup succeeded and Dak failed. Zach Martin succeeded and Dak failed. Tank Lawrence succeeded in Dak failed. That's not, that's not fair. It's illogical. The 2016 Cowboys all fell short. Not just one guy. But it was a hell of a fast post-Romo. He was still on the roster. Post-Romo turnaround. So the 2016 Cowboys make the playoffs with their rookie quarterback, just like the Cowboys uh, 2016 Cowboys make the playoffs with Dak. Shocking. Just like C.J. Stroud. That was pretty stunning. So what did the Cowboys do in spring of 2017 and beyond? To take what, was, what, what had happened in 2016 and go, let's hit the accelerator now. Because we have a rookie quarterback who's cheap, way cheaper than C.J. Stroud. We have a rookie quarterback and a good team. Let's throw resources into it now. That's what Houston's doing. Did the Joneses do that? Twenty seventeen off season. Uh, the Ezekiel Elliott suspension is not uh, is not part of this conversation. We're talking about the roster building leading up to twenty seventeen. They did a Lyle Collins extension, so they kept their own. They did uh, a contract with the punter Chris Jones, four year contract, kept their own. Marcus, none of this matters. This is the past. Let's look forward to it. You, you don't get it, Marcus, with all due respect. Trying to figure out the mistakes or successes made in the past is how you figure out the future. You know that. 
What worked in 2017? What didn't work in 2017? That's how you figure out what's going to work and not work in 2025. Ramon, they probably thought everything was fine. Yep. Because here's what the Cowboys did to take advantage of their rapid rebound with rookie Dak Prescott. Extended Lyle, signed the punter, signed Witten to a four-year extension, kept Jonathan Cooper, remember him, guard, kept Darren McFadden, temporarily. By the way, I'm not saying Jonathan Cooper and Darren McFadden were world beaters, but this team, this offseason, hasn't even signed a Jonathan Cooper and a Darren McFadden. Doug Free retired, if I recall properly. That opened up $5 million worth of room. Tony Romo, when they made when they cut him and made him a post June one release, saved them fourteen million dollars. They gained fourteen million dollars worth of room. Uh, the post June release split it into two. There was still eight million dollars worth of dead money, twenty four million dollars, and by the time you did the net. They gained $14 million of the room by saying goodbye to Tony Romo and didn't do anything with it. That's what sh should trouble you about, a, about your reflection on the past and how it applies to the future. We've forgotten about this because 2016 was so thrilling in so many ways. And then you guys are all bringing up the Ezekiel Elliott suspension. That, that's, that was a headline grabber all that next year. And the team was still good the next year. But they didn't do anything to get better than good. And Jerry didn't use the phrase then. He's starting to use the phrase now. Uh, Mr. Mike, we're keeping our powder dry. That's an old Donnie Nelson, Dallas Mavericks phrase. Keep your powder dry. But for what? And for when? We have Stephen Jones telling us now that if they did the Dak Prescott contract today and gained $20 million worth of room, that doesn't necessarily mean they'd go spend $20 million. Why not? Keeping your powder dry for what and for when? Because now that we've done this reflection, and I'll close with this. Pool, $2 pitch in. Why does Jerry keep lying to us year after year after year? Well, all I don't know about that, but all in was absolutely a lie, or at least a misrepresentation of what they were really planning on doing. And now we know that. So the comp to the Texans isn't about, it's not about Stephen A. Smith. It's not about America's team. It's not about, I, I don't care who the best team in Texas is. That's not important, particularly. It's, it's fun or the antithesis of fun. I'm talking about a history lesson that is telling us that the Cowboys stay on a high plateau philosophy, which is Stephen's, and keep our powder dry, which is Jerry's words, but Stephen's philosophy, now has a very specific example of how it didn't work. Doug Free retires. I got $5 million. I didn't use it on anything. Tony Romo. Released. I say $14 million. I didn't do anything with it. Jose, trying to interpret what Jerry said. He said, Jer Jose, respectfully, a lot of people are trying to parse what Jerry said and what he meant. 
he knew exactly what he was saying when he said all in. He knew exactly what he was saying in terms of what you would think he meant. And you know that. If I say all in, and all I really mean is I'm keeping CeeDee Lamb and Micah Parsons, then I'm just flapping my gums. TW, $10 pitching. The whole we like the players we have is nonsensical. Of course you like the players you have. Why are they walking and no transactions being done? And I'm telling you because they are planning on blowing it up in the spring of 2025. And so to this idea of what all in meant, you don't get credit because your intention is to keep your two best players. Jerry knew that when he said all in, that would be interpreted in a way that would buy some time for people considering renewing their season tickets. <laughs> to say, oh, we're all in. I think I'll renew my season tickets. By the way, uh, I'm told some tickets in the 300 section, uh, they're, they're, they just sent you your bill. This year is going to be, if I'm understanding it right, 10% increase on your ticket in section 300 up there. Josh, if you haven't been to a conference championship in three decades, your system clearly doesn't work. And, and, and this is what I'm saying now about Stephen's 14-year philosophy. We now have the Jerry era of Wildcatton, long time ago, versus the Stephen Jerry era of keep your powder dry. We have the first 14 years, if you want to look at it that way, of Cowboys management. And we have the last 14 years of Cowboys management. And it's pretty clear which one is more successful. Now we have Houston getting ready to build its own track record. And because I just gave you a look at 2017, now, now I'm afraid that you might have a glimpse in the rear view mirror that reflects up into your future. Ramon, it's tougher than hell to make it to the championship. I've told this story before. I'll tell it again. Because you're right. I'm sitting at Valley Ranch in my little office that Jerry built for me. I got a Mike Fisher chair. I got a Richie Witt chair. And I got a hot seat. And the schedule comes out. And Aikman comes in with, comes, comes in with the schedule closes the door, sits in the hot seat, and here we go. Privately, obviously, we never wrote this. And we went through the schedule. And Aikman's going, that's a win. That one's tough. That's a win. That's a win. That's a win. That's going to be tough. That's a win. And uh, it's amazing. And, of course, you know, I'm like, I'd like to write something. He said, you, you, yeah, you can't write it. I'm just, I'm just shooting the bull with you. Oh, okay, okay. So you think that's that? Uh, and then he said, don't misunderstand me. It's hard to win that game. But I think we're going to win it. We're a better team. Yeah. Fish, it's hard to even win a half of a game. Yeah, I get it. And yet, then he won't stop. Fish, it's hard to even win a series in the NFL. Yeah, okay, okay. Try. Fish, <laughs> it's hard to even win on one play. Yeah, it, it, it's hard. It's challenging. It's difficult. In 2017, the Cowboys taught us a lesson that I guess we need to relearn. It's hard, it's difficult, and it's challenging. It's especially hard, difficult, and challenging when you're not even trying. Fish. <laughs>